Hi everybody, I'm Taylor, and for my uh, educational giant report, I chose to do it on um, Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi. Now I, well one, that is a mouthful, but two, I had never heard of this guy before, and so learning about him was pretty neat for me. Um, so just to get started, just a little quick bio about him. He was born January 12, 1746 in Switzerland. He was the second of three children to be born in his family. Um, he was raised by all women, his mother, his older sister, and then their maid. His father died when he was only five, so he didn't really know his dad. Um, he spent lots of time with his maternal grandmother, and he saw how poverty affected the children just around him in his area. And um, This kind of led to another part of his teaching and like the methods he used, and also some of his educational ideas as well. Um, from a young age, he admired Rousseau and just his theories and the way he taught and just the way, you know, the way he kind of thought. Um, so growing up, he was trained to be a clergyman. However, with pressure from uh, friends and just people around him, he decided to be a farmer, so a complete 180. But um, he married a woman named Anna Schultz Schultes, and they had one son together. And um, he named his son after Rousseau. So like I said, he admired him very much. Um, so Johann was referred to as the father of modern education by a lot of his just peers and other educators around him. He wanted to, um, he wanted to help the poor and he knew what it was like to be poor and how hard it was to get an education just being in that situation himself. He didn't grow up with very much money or very much and so he knew how difficult it could be to get an education. Um, so when he married his wife, he bought 15 acres of land, and he built his home there, and that's where they raised their family. But because of his great desire to help the poor and the needy and just to get those kids the education they deserve, he transformed his home into a school. And this is a school where he invited lots of the kids to come and learn, and he wouldn't charge them anything. He just wanted them to be able to get the education that he knew that they all deserved and kind of needed. Um, he taught them life skills and that would better their lives and could get them out of the situations they were in. So they would, they would, be, they would be able to, prepare, to um, provide for themselves later in life. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, he didn't want the kids to have to pay for their education. So he had them sell the textile goods that they learned to make. That way they could go to school for free but keep learning these life skills that would benefit them later on. Um, however, the school wasn't doing very well financially because it didn't have that sort of income. And then in 1779, he had to close due to that lack of finance, financial aid or financial you know, assistance. Uh, let's see. So also because of how great of a, just a leader and a teacher he was, he played a huge role in the decrease of illiteracy in uh, Switzerland. So in 1830, the illiteracy was almost completely gone from that country, which is really cool. Um, his main principle in teaching was balancing development of child's hands, heart, and head. He was very concerned with, child, with child's self-developing and would switch up teaching to benefit the children. So if you were more of a visual learner or more of whatever, he would switch up his lesson plan and help you individually so you'd be able to understand the just the just the lesson and what was going on in that day, which is awesome because if you're not getting it, how are you supposed to, you know, gain that education? And so I really admired that about him. Um, he was always doing it for the kids. The kids were the most important to him, and I think that's another thing that's helping that um, would bring to teachers today is that importance of you're doing it for the kids. You need to remember that. You need to remember that. And you need to remember that. Um, so I appreciate him having that love for children. And um, like I said, he emphasized on one-on-one -on -one teaching. So if you weren't under if the child wasn't understanding it, or they were struggling, he would take the time to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. His motto and his main principle was learning by head, heart, and hand. Head, hand, and heart. I'm sorry. Um, so the hands. This just to describe what those three things are. Um, just to you know under help that get understood. Um, the hands were what can be done with our hands and using common sense as well. So anything that can be done with our hands and then using that thinking process as well. The heart was being able to make good decisions and having a good moral compass. So basically that was just being able to tell right from wrong, good from evil, 
And I love that he emphasized that because I think we don't have that emphasis a lot in school. And so him, that was really cool. And then the head is just all the thinking that takes place before a person realizes what's going on in the world around them. So kind of just like, hey, this is going on. Um, so once that click or that light bulb went on, that's what that was. Um, let's see. Pestalozzi impacted teachers today immensely. He showed the importance of caring for the children and wanting them to succeed. And I think that's really awesome that it was more like not just about drilling and killing these students just with the education that they needed to get so they could um, succeed in later in their lives, but he really, truly cared about these kids and really wanted them to be, do well in their lives. Um, and that's why he was so willing to help the poor and the needy and stuff like that. Um, he gave teachers the courage to teach differently and to be creative in the classroom. So he, because of the way he taught and the way he would switch up his lesson plans for the kids, it gives teachers today the idea that, hey, we can do that too. We don't have to just go by the book. We can kind of change things up and do kind of however it's going to work best for our class, I guess. Um, uh, so I was able to work with a kindergarten class this last summer, and it was really an amazing experience. Um, one of these teachers, I admire her so much. She shows um, kind of ways that her teaching are like Pestalozzi's teaching. Um, like him, she she was very um, she was very interested in the one on one aspect of teaching. Um, so she would have her kids do jobs, is what she'd call them. She'd have a list of things she'd put on the board, and she'd say, "Okay, guys, you have this many jobs you need to get done today." And the kids would go on and do their thing. Most of the jobs weren't hard, be coloring a picture or writing their name, but she was able to, because these kids were so self-managing, she was able to take the time and work with the kids that were struggling that she would be able to give that one-on-one -on -one attention to, or she would have like a reading station, and so she'd get to work with those kids one-on-one, -on -one. and I think that's important because it shows just how crazy it is that this man, you know, was teaching over, you know, 300 years ago, he was teaching so long ago, but his methods are still being taught today. Um, his methods were very child-centered, and it was based on the differences in students and then the self-activity with those students. So he was very, like, I, I feel like I'm just, it's a broken record. He was very in it for the students, and I love that about this man. Um, I think that the way he taught is really kind of how I want to teach. I want to just be there for the students, and I want to help them succeed and do better in life. Uh, so I hope you all enjoyed learning a little bit more about Pestalozzi and how great of a man he was and great educator he was. So thanks for watching.